Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Creatively Crafted Life. My name is Melanie, and it's another Calling Creatives with Nikki from Nikki's Scrapbooking Adventure. Hi, Nikki. Hello. Hope you're doing good today. I'm doing fantastic. Well, I say that. I just got back from a trip to the Netherlands. Of course, by the time by the time this airs, <laughs> it will be a bit. But um, I was up at 3.30 this morning, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how oh, my gosh. Went, so. Was it yeah. the jet lag or something, like with the time change? Yeah, it's a nine hour time difference. And then it was a 11 hour flight. And yeah, anyways, we'll see how we'll see how it plays out. So the bags under my eyes are legit. So <laughs> anyways, oh my goodness. let's 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 get into the more exciting topic, right? Let's talk about what projects we made based on last month's journal journaling discussion where we talked about essentials, either essential stories that we want to tell or essential items that we want to document specifically. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen that video, I will leave a link below so that you can check out the premise of this because it might give you a little bit more groundwork before we get started. But the question is, did we deliver? I did. I don't know about Nikki. She was a little <laughs> on the fence. <laughs> I made a layout. I think yours is probably going to be a little bit more intensive, but I made a layout. So that's I cool. feel like that's a win. Yeah, of course. Anything's a win. We actually got quite a few responses from people with some different ideas. Um, and one of them that was raised that I thought was a really great one was essential skills. Mm. I thought that was that was a really cool topic to to explore. And um someone played off of your idea of um the, the essentials in your kitchen. And they had said, you know, at a basic minimum, salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> and that led me to an idea of documenting possibly the difference between my essentials and my boyfriend's essentials. So he loves to cook Indian and I am like a plain Jane meat and potatoes, you know, <laughs> salt and pepper and, and garlic probably would do the trick. Whereas my spice cabinet, since he's come into my life, has like expanded exponentially. <laughs> so that might be fun to document. That would be fun. That would be fun. I personally documented about my scrapbooking essentials because we had talked about that in the last call as well. Or yeah, on my channel, we talked about kind of the scrapbooking essentials, right? Um, and so I just totally went off that and made my layout. So plus, plus you were excited about using the paper, right? Oh, I was totally excited about using the paper. So I used photo plays. You had me at paper, I think. Um, so very fun, bright, happy colors. And I used my Cricut Joy, which now sits on my desk for all of my titles. So my title had all of the essentials, right? Yep. Um, so up here, it says scrap within the tassels. I'll fix that later down the road. But my layout doesn't have a picture. I was thinking about doing a picture for, you know, my room, but that didn't end up happening. So my journaling is very long this time around. So I have a whole room almost dedicated to this hobby, but listed to the left are the essentials. If I had to start all over, these are the items I would buy again. Hopefully I won't have to because my room is now full of all my treasures. I am so glad I came back to this hobby again. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. And you know what? It doesn't need a photo. It really doesn't. Your title... Um... <laughs> Your title just fills the space of uh, of of a photo. It's quite good visually. Very nice. I love the use of the tassels. I have a few of those in my supplies and I'm never quite sure where I want to use them. I always think I have to use them like on the edge of uh, the spine of a of a mini album or something like that. But why not put them on a scrapbook page? Yep, this is uh, probably... My second time using this specific set with a bright, happy colors. And the first time I used it was on a layout about being obsessed with this hobby. So it was fitting that <laughs> this was talking about the essential. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, I, um, I, I, I was busy. I was busy. I, I was very excited. And so um, the first thing I did was I just sat down and did my journaling. So I picked three different journal prompts or not journal prompts. Let me back this up. The first thing I decided to focus on was the pivotal moments in my life journal, right? Like, or mm -hmm. call it in my journal. It's not going to be a journal. <laughs> it's not even going to be a scrapbook. It's going to be a series of folios. And I, I talked and turned about whether I wanted to put in a six by eight album or how I wanted to do it. 
And I ended up coming up with something that you had shared previously on one of your videos about these little folios. I think you had done it to document stories for your son, I think, right? Specific, mm -hmm. specific topics. Yeah. And um, so I thought I have a lot to say about these items. I don't have a lot of photos. And a lot of times the photos I think will just be representational of the theme of whatever it is that I'm talking to necessarily like, that's not the point, right? The journaling is the point. So I thought I would create a little folio like this. This is the one that's not done up. Um, but you'll notice I have the journaling printed off and I have a couple photos in here because the next thing I decided was that in order to embellish these, I wanted to use my 49 and market, no, 49 and market or Minte collections. And the reason why I did that is I don't know how familiar everyone is with those collections, but their papers are gorgeous and I have mm -hmm. a hard time cutting them up. So this way, if I put a pocket in, I can still have the full paper. When I pull this out, you'll still see the full, well, half a sheet, I guess, if you will. You'll still have that visibility without losing it. And so I think you figured it's the best of both worlds. So this one here is going to be a story about, what am I calling it? The missing year. I think that's what I'm calling it. So it's about my school my school life, elementary, elementary school life, and how I'm missing a year in there and what the reasons and, and why that's all about. I'm not going to share that journaling. It's quite, I've got a lot of strong emotions about that. And so I don't feel comfortable sharing that online, but I do have two other ones. I appreciate that you say that you don't want to share because I feel like that's important. You know, when, when you have stories that are essential to you and they're not fun, sometimes you don't want to share that with people. Yeah. You know, so I appreciate you saying that. Well, thank you. Thank you. That, that helps, helps me because I debated and I'm like, well, there's so many ways that people could take things the wrong way. And that wasn't the intent of the journaling. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that one appreciate that. <laughs> that one's going to be for, you know, whoever is interested in my life at some point and wants to read it, or maybe it's just for me, for my own, my own uh, self-development. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> a lot of these are actually quite emotionally driven because they are pivotal moments in my life. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, this is quite, quite interesting. So anyways, this one here, I decided all of them are going to have roughly the same um, format. Um, so the, the title is going to run up along the spine. And this one says midlife crisis at 23, which I know is a little dramatic, but it was kind of dramatic to me at the time. Um, so then you get, you know, the, the cover page. And then on the inside, I've got... A photo and I did some embellishments just from the cutout from the collections a lot of times they will um, include like a page of just uh, fussy cut images and then on this side here I, of course I've got the journaling and it's double-sided so I have a lot to say I don't know if I'll read all of it and then also I had a little tuck-in card because I thought the card was just cute with some specifics about the photo and why I chose this so for someone who doesn't like to journal, <laughs> I think that's, that's a pretty good, pretty good attempt, right? So I, I'm going to share part of it because I think I find that interesting to, you know, when people are willing to share. So I'm going to share this. Hopefully we'll see how long it goes. I may end up cutting some of it out, but um, we'll see. So I said, if there was ever a period of uncertainty in my life, I would have to say that 1997 to 1999 was it. You probably weren't even born then, right? <laughs> no, I was there. I was there. I was okay. like five or six. <laughs> okay. So March 1997, and of course, this is a bit dramatic. I hit rock bottom, right? I was having a midlife crisis and I was only 23. I'd come to the realization that I hated my job and that all my career aspirations to this point had led me to a place I no longer wanted to be. So I realized I just completed a four-year university degree program, <laughs> done all this work to become basically a chartered accountant, I decided. I hated it. <laughs> mm. It was miserable. So I think another factor that contributed was the disintegration of what I thought was a solid friend group. It felt like I was dropped. No one remembered me, or if they did, I was an afterthought. So I had a lot of strong feelings of abandonment and disconnection. That combined with the pressures from my work environment, my own internal ideas of what my life should be, what it should look like, all contributed to the place I arrived at. So it was the middle of tax season. I was exhausted. I don't remember the straw that broke the camel's back. 
but I distinctly remember calling my parents in tears looking for advice. My dad was quick to say, give your notice and come to Winnipeg. Typical dad, right? Action oriented, (laughs) like, (laughs) that's Mm -hmm. it. You're coming home, right? (laughs) I believe my response was something like, I can't do that. It's the middle of tax season and everyone will hate me. Pretty much sobbing the words out. (laughs) I distinctly remember this, like literally, everybody Mm. will hate me. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) So my, my father eventually got me to see reason. I left the call with the expectation that I was going to give my notice at the end of April, which was the end of the tax season in Canada. I would get through tax season and then I would go home and figure out what to do from there. So little did I know that only a short time later, my life would pivot again. Short as in 30 minutes later. I called my friend. I know, right? I called my friend Joanne to talk to her about my decision. I was shocked when she seemed to dismiss me right away after I informed her that I was going to quit. She basically hung up on me. (laughs) Literally. I'm like, I'm going to quit my job. And she just said, I'm going to call you right back and hung up. (laughs) Now, to give her credit, she she did say she was going to call back. And she did call back in about half an hour with a surprising job offer. So what? What? (laughs) Yeah. So in the matter of less than an hour, I decided to quit my job, move to a different province to having a job offer and not moving. So my head was spinning. The job offer was intended to be a temporary position that would help the local health authority get through some challenges while giving me the opportunity to think through what I wanted to next. It was too good an offer to turn down. So from May 1997 to September 1999, I worked for the Crossroads Regional Health Authority. During this time, I worked on system documentation and process enhancements to improve efficiencies. I was also involved in helping the payroll department transition to a new payroll system. The consultant expressed that I had a good grasp of the new system and even indicated that they would be interested in in having me join their team. By this time, I had made other plans to take a year to travel, and so I didn't give it serious thought. While the conversion didn't come to fruition due to political posturing and reorganization, one can't help but think that perhaps a seed had been planted. Fast forward 15 years later, I found myself making another pivotal change in my career, which had a significant focus on system conversions. More on that to come. Wow. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yeah. So that's, um, that was my midlife crisis. I got it over and done with. (laughs) So now it's, sailing right (laughs) although maybe I'm about due for another one (laughs) you say that (laughs) wow thank you so much for sharing that is a crazy story yeah it's a little bit crazy if Joanne's watching because I'm still friends with Joanne to this day even though I felt she abandoned me in my moment of need (laughs) she definitely pulled through and it really did it really was a um it really was a pivotal moment in changing the direction that that I wanted to head in as far as career goes I still stayed in the accounting field for quite a while, but yeah, now I'm, now I'm working in an IT department. So kind of interesting. And then I did another one. Like I said, I was on a, on a big kick. So this one actually flows after that one, right? So this one I'm calling the grand tour and I'm using the, one of Minte's travel collections. Um, And I love this, uh, the sign here, because one of them says, uh, Sydney on it I think yeah Sydney and I ended up going to Australia and living there for a year and so that is what this story is about and again very similar in design so a photo of me in Australia I don't know if you can see that um and then again lots of documentation I had a lot to say on this one <laughs> you know two and a half pages worth of documenting. And because I didn't have enough for two pages, I thought I would just include more of the very pretty paper because why not? And I don't know, are you interested in hearing this one? I would be. I personally love your stories. I think you're a great journaler. Um, (laughs) I think on top of that, I think readers or readers, viewers like hearing it too, because it gives them permission to tell their stories too. Oh, and I love that. And that's really what I think I, I think I'm hoping to get out of these is not only permission for myself to document and say some of these things, but to encourage others to. I think it is important. There's something therapeutic in writing that you don't, I guess, maybe in expressing things that you don't always feel comfortable saying out loud. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Okay, so October 1999. So this pretty much carries off from from that last that last story, like I said, it was a very uh, very um, turbulent time in my life, so to speak. 
October 1999 saw the start of the biggest adventure of my life. Keep in mind that I just come from come from having an early onset midlife crisis. So it only made sense to take a year and figure out where I went from there. My par parents had recently done the grand tour of Australia and having family that lived in Western Australia, it made sense to head off down under to regroup. The plan was to travel for two months, taking various tours through Fiji, New Zealand, and parts of Australia, primarily the East Coast and Northern Territory, and then end up in Perth. Perth was to be my base of operations where hopefully I would find some sort of temporary employment that would allow me to continue to stay for the balance of the year. This was the first time I had ever left the country and really the first time I had done any sort of extensive traveling. My only flights previously had been between Edmonton and Winnipeg, which is about a two-hour flight. There was no thought of a cell phone, right? It's 1999. Cell phones did exist, oh, man. but but it wasn't like I didn't have one, you know, and it was like, okay, you just went off into the grand, grand beyond <laughs> without a cell phone. So there's no thought of a cell phone. And the plan was to keep in touch using internet cafes periodically as locations allowed. Well, not terribly young, I was 26 at the time, and I was very practical. I was not naive to some of the challenges I would face. I knew that I was very reserved, shy, and pretty risk adverse. I was going to have to push myself to talk to people, engage in tour activities that perhaps were outside my comfort zone, and once in Perth, find a social group and jobs to keep me going, but that was what I wanted. I wanted to break free of some of the walls I built around myself. Well, I didn't expect to become the life of the party, I wanted to try scary things like whitewater rafting, scuba diving on the Great Barrier Reef, and connect with people through my travels. I did have moments that could only now be seen as life-changing. I remember distinctly getting off the plane at my first location and realizing there was no one there waiting for me. I remember how shocked I was at the feeling of aloneness and eventually realizing that it was going to be okay. I went whitewater rafting in New Zealand. And I remember the feeling of panic when I hit the cold water. I basically had gone overboard. Well, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I realized I was in a situation where I felt I wasn't in control. However, I was able to calm myself down. And while I couldn't control the water around me, I knew I was a strong swimmer and I needed to work this, with the situation instead of fighting it. My bank card stopped working while I was traveling. Oh. And I had no access to additional funds for a couple of weeks before I was able to get to my uncle's place. There was no online banking, no cell phone, and limited access to things like a computer or a phone. <laughs> Let me oh tell you, there gosh. was sheer moments of panic. I was able to take stock of what I did have and strategically figure out how to make the money last until I could get to Perth. So I think what had happened was that I had been gone for a period of time and wasn't terribly active and I think when it did when I did become active even though I had told them that I was traveling they they shut it down cut, me off. <laughs> cut yeah. me off yeah so lesson learned always take two cards with you not just one <laughs> case one one goes down on you so I won't say I was the most popular person on the tours, but on each tour I managed to connect and hang out with someone. I was able to join a great group of single women friends in Perth. While many of those friendships have not stood the test of time, my friendship with Darlene is now going on 25 years, and I consider her one of my closest friends. Many of these may seem insignificant to some, but for me, these played a pivotal role in changing my outlook, my risk tolerance, and ability to interact with others. While my tendency is still is to still be risk adverse. I no longer fear change and even welcome it. I no longer consider self myself shy, but I have accepted, accepted that I'm very introverted and still will never be the life of the party. Many friends or, other, or rather acquaintances are great, but a deeper connection with a few close friends is what I value. While I continue to be reserved and maybe not the most open of individuals, I consider, continue to challenge myself, learning to be more expressive and willing to share my thoughts and feelings. This year-long trip opened a door that hasn't closed. It kick-started a journey of personal growth and development, not based on some preconceived idea of what should be done, but on what is right for me and who I want to be. Wow. You've had some crazy adventures, <laughs> especially in that short little time. I yeah. can't even fathom not having access to money. I yeah. can't, you know, like, what would I do? I'm trying to think in my own brain, like, what would I do if I didn't have access to the money? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little freaky. It was a little. And I don't even know because I remember phoning my parents because I'm like, what happened to my bank card? And and because they they were still back in Canada. And I don't even know that there was a way for them to wire me money. 
Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I don't, I didn't have a bank account there for them to wire money to that I could access. My card didn't work. So even if they put money in my account, <laughs> I mm-hmm. couldn't access it. So, and I'm sure there probably was a way to make it work. We just didn't know, right? So it was literally a matter of, okay, I've got $50. that has got to last me for two weeks, <laughs> yeah. you know? Uh, and and I was doing tours. So again, that's that risk adverse thing. I wasn't traveling completely independently. So a lot of the stuff had already been paid for. So it was just more incidentals that, that, you know, you pick up along the way, but yeah, it was, it was a little bit, it was a little bit freaky for sure. Anyway. I will say, I love that you tie your books together by mentioning the previous book. Um, I love that you added the stories and in specific instances and then you tied it all together it was like beautiful it was chef's kiss oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you I feel really good about it and and it's so interesting because like this is what, like almost 30 years ago now I guess 25 years ago it's interesting how it still feels like front and center like I still remember and that just to me that tells me it was a pivotal moment in who in who I am um Mm -hmm. yeah so so I'm going to continue with that I have quite a few more stories to tell I mapped out kind of what I think would like I would like to cover one of the reasons why I did these little these little journals is because I can can, I can expand the story as much as I need to without expanding the amount of space it takes up right because like that was two Mm -hmm. pages whereas the other one was only one um I like that I don't have to worry about the timing of them because I can do them out of order and they'll all still fit because I just have to move the books around. I'm not sure if I should put, you know how you can get like that really thin label tape from like your label maker. I'm not Mm -hmm. sure if I should put a label, like the title down the spine, because that's what you'll see if I put it in like a magazine holder. Or if you just, if you want something smaller, you know, like a title would be kind of hard to read. But if you just put the date on it, I think that would help. Oh, that's a good idea. Order. Yeah, that's a good idea. As I was, I was trying to think like how how to how how to make it make sense from the outside. But the date mm-hmm. would probably work for most things because that's kind of how I was thinking of it in terms of a timeline. So that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah, my life doesn't get this. This was the most exciting part. <laughs> I like it gets much more. <laughs> It gets much more spaced out after this. <laughs> I've told you in the past, it sounds like it's time for you and your boyfriend to have another adventure. <laughs> yeah. So the last one, like I said, the one I'm not sharing is about is about my elementary school. And I noticed that 49 and Market came out with a new line called Academy. So Yes. Oh my gosh. Have, I love do it. A, I do. do have, okay. Uh, I bought uh, it from my local scrapbook store and I got to touch and feel the paper and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And it's a new designer. So I wanted to support the new designer, but also it's by a guy. So it's a little bit guyish. Okay. Okay. That explains because it has a bit of a different feel. And I was, I was curious about that. So I saw that and I'm like, okay, I, I like that fits this vibe of, you know, like having the pretty covers and then if you pull pull it out of the pocket that the you know the the image still continues through so yeah I'm gonna definitely pick that one up um I mean obviously this one was a the- travel themed one which was pretty generic but this one is just a typewriter and I'm okay mm-hmm. with that for most of them but if there's something that's theme specific and I want the line anyways why not use them right right gives you another excuse to buy pretty paper <laughs> yeah exactly exactly and then um I just wanted to share before we sign off this conversation today, but um, so I have a six by eight binder and this is that I am binder that I started. Um, I don't know that I love this cover page. I did this a while ago, but again, a lot of times when I do projects like this, I have a very similar kind of layout idea. I don't know why it just seems to make sense to have some sort of photo and then the journaling. So just to give you guys some ideas, I'm not going to read through all of these, but I have like, I am an aunt. I am adventurous. I am a friend. I am a scrapbooker. So that's what the scrapbooker one looks like. You guys see that? And I made, I should actually document this somewhere on this layout. So I went to a crop and we were challenged to use stuff from the giveaway table. So that's what this layout was. So these were supplies from the giveaway table at that crop. And the pictures are of the people at the crop. So it was, it was kind of fun, a little bit different. 
But ironically, of all of these pages, I have not used the I am collection that I bought from from, <laughs> from simple stories. <laughs> from simple stories. Yeah. So I gotta make more of an effort to actually use those, I think, because <laughs> otherwise, what am I gonna use it for? <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's really funny. <laughs> yeah. So I think I'm gonna continue to work on both of these kind of themed books. And I also do want to start a my favorite my favorite mm. album and I think it was Echo Park that has a line my favorite things mm -hmm. yep yeah and so I think I'm going to use that for kind of documenting that I don't know what format it's going to be in yet but maybe as we go through these different journaling prompts well maybe I think what I'm going to do is try and build them within the context of these so that I continue to work on them as we discuss our prompts and who knows maybe we'll throw in the random 12 by 12 page <laughs> Oh my, I saw that you had a 12 by 12 layout on your channel recently, didn't you? <laughs> I actually did. Oh, I did a whole stack of... It was base pages, I think. Base pages. Yeah. So I went at home, probably like 18 base pages I used up. So yeah, it's... I printed photos, people. I printed photos. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I, ironically, though, I finished scrapbooking all those photos in like the Friday, Saturday, and now I've got to print photos again. <laughs> you know what? They're on pages. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I say that's a it win. Felt, yeah, it felt really good. So I think the other thing I noticed is that part of my problem is I have to organize my photos. So I have to go through and figure out which ones I want to print. There's no way I'm just going to blanket send them all to get them printed. It's just not, I, mm -hmm. I take way too many photos. So I think if I can get through sorting those, then printing is not such a big deal because I've already decided which ones to print. Then it's just a matter of printing. So mm -hmm. we'll work on that in the next little bit. Let's get them kind of organized. Now I just need to get let go of editing them. Like just print them <laughs> the way they are. I don't yep. know. It's a tough and one. And then you can cut them down later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cut them down or like, okay, really, if it's a little bit brighter, does it really make that much of a difference? Like move on. I totally get it. Next month, we're going to talk with Scylla from A Choice Bits of Bliss. And we're going to talk about what we've been doing to organize and purge. And then we're also going to do some more journaling prompts. So definitely stay tuned for those. Are we going to give them a hint as to what the category is going to be? No, I think we're going to leave that a surprise. Okay. So you have no choice but to check back in with us next month. If you guys have any stories that you are excited to tell, we'd love to hear about that below. If anything that we have said has inspired anything, we love to we love that kind of feedback. We want to encourage you guys to document your stories, not just listen to ours. And until next time, happy crafting. <laughs>